Welcome to Greatness Mindside. I am Dr. Aisha Al Sheikh. I'm a medical scientist and researcher turned therapist, coach, mentor, and business entrepreneur. Greatness Mindsight is a podcast that brings you motivational and authentic messages from incredibly inspiring and extraordinary people, where I dive in and deconstruct their mind to explore different aspects of their lives from entrepreneurship and leadership to motivation, fears, and how they overcame their struggles, tackled their inner demons, and overcame adversity. This show dissects the psychology behind their successes to help you discover and unlock your inner potential and give the most effective tips, advice, and lessons that you can emulate or apply in your own life, especially if you are just starting your entrepreneurial journey. Each episode, I bring you an inspiring and extraordinary person, so keep yourself updated with the latest episodes by subscribing now to this podcast. For you to come back from the mountain, you just need to turn around. No one needs to give you an excuse. You just turn around and say, I give up and find a hundred reasons why. But you always have to hold on to that one thought that is pushing you every day, one step in front of the other. Have your goals set in front of you and focus on it. Focus on the summit. Sleeping on rocks doesn't matter. If you are tired now, it doesn't matter, as long as you will reach that goal. That's what happens to every entrepreneur. You're going to sleep on rocks, you're going to suffer, you're going to cry, you're going to break down, but then you're going to stand on that summit. By Mo Alfani. This is episode 11, and in this episode, I am thrilled to bring you an extraordinary and an incredibly inspiring guest, Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Thani, more popularly known as Mo Al Thani. He is the first Qatari to reach the peak of Mount Everest and all seven summits in the world. On November 11, 2020, Mo Al Thani scaled the Amadablam peak in Nepal, adding another mountain to his credit. Aside from being a mountaineer and a sportsman, he is also a serial entrepreneur and businessman with many visions and on a mission to inspire others to reach their dreams and also loved by all his employees. In addition, he is a philanthropist and is the brand ambassador of Reach Out to Asia where he works on spreading awareness, raising funds, and most importantly, inspiring the youth to make a difference through their dreams. So without further ado, let's dive into this episode right now. Hi and welcome, Sheikh Mohammed. Uh, I'm extremely honored and privileged to have you on my show and spending this quality time with you today. Um, you are a source of inspiration to so many people, uh, including myself. And I would like to share with our listeners a bit about your background and what led you to become who you are today and what you do. Uh, you are the first Qatari to reach the peak of Mount Everest and all seven summits, mashallah, in the world. And also have recently climbed uh, Amadab peak in Nepal adding to your achievements. So uh, when did your love for mountaineering began and what made you decide I want to do this myself and I take took up the challenge for and put it on yourself? Uh, first of all thank you Dr. Aisha for inviting me uh, on your uh, talk and uh, I'm really uh, honored to be here. Um, uh, you're an inspiring person uh, as well and uh, I'm looking forward to to see uh, many of your uh, shows and your magic everywhere. Um, well, my my adventure uh, started long time ago. I've always wanted. I always loved adventure since I was really young. Um, I always traveled to remote places. Um, always like to be pushed out of my comfort zones. And uh, I was in actually in Nepal on a river rafting trip in 2008. Um, when my guide, uh, whose name is Medin, who was uh, at, ba- at that time 68 years old, speaking about Nepal, about the beauty of Nepal, about um, its mountains, its uh, rivers, the magnificent uh, topography they have, 
And then he started talking about uh, Everest and the first ascent and, uh, and the glory of uh, uh, Tenzing Norgay and uh, Edmund Hillary of the first ascents in 1953. So um, the more they spoke about the mountain, the more I wanted to climb. Uh, so, I, so at the end, I told him, you know what, Madden, I'm climbing this mountain. And he challenged me. He's like, there's no way you can climb that mountain. You come from the desert. How can you climb a mountain? And uh, we were a bunch of kids running around, jumping uh, on a river raft, uh, on, a, on a boat, you know? So, so uh, like, if I saw myself back then, I, I would say I would never climb a mountain too. But uh, he challenged me, and, and that uh, challenge basically uh, pushed me to, to try it out. So um, uh, little did I know that I would really fall in love with the mountains and the wilderness and uh, the freedom that you get from climbing. And I started 2009, uh, I went to base camp, Everest base camp, and uh, never stopped. So that was the initial, that was the, the first... The first, the first uh, uh, hike was Everest base camp in 2009. Before that, I've never done anything like it. How did it feel when you did the first one? I almost died. It was the hardest thing I've done in my life. Um, I got uh, altitude sickness. Oh, when I was there, I was like, this is not for me. I don't want to do this again. And when I was in base camp, I was like, you know, this, I've done it, I, I, I'm quitting. And I, I actually called my family from there, I'm like, big mistake, I'm not going to do this again. But uh, once I walked down, I, um, you get the oxygen again, you feel the glory, you feel the, you know, the being proud of what you did. Um, and then uh, after that, I, you know, I, I, when I was going down, actually, I planned my next trip, which was Kilimanjaro. Uh, two, uh, three months later, I was on the summit of Kilimanjaro. Wow, you changed your mind quickly after that first yeah. one. And the same thing happened in Kilimanjaro. I was like, ah, oh, this is it. I'm not going to do this again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, no, one, no one believes me now when I say that. <laughs> Mashallah, yani, you took, it took you a while. The first one was the hardest. But then after that, you just said, I, I can do more. Uh, which is amazing like to push yourself further because you've just achieved something so difficult. So uh, regarding with your recent climb in uh, Amataplam, um, I want the real story. I want the struggle behind the scenes and the success that people see when you reach the mountain and the summit. What were the emotional and physical and mental challenges that you faced during your trip going up? Yeah. Um, uh, first of all, uh, I definitely faced all three challenges uh, climbing this mountain. Let's start with the physical. Uh, mm -hmm. I was not fit. Uh, I train every day. I train six days a week. Uh, however, uh, I was not training for a mountain, and I decided last minute like this. I've never. I, I always plan a mountain six months ahead or a year ahead, sometimes more. But uh, this mountain happened in two weeks. It just called me. I had to go. So. Uh, I wasn't fit physically to climb Amadablam. I thought, like, you know, the thing is, if, if you know what it takes, and sometimes uh, you know that you're going to really suffer, but you know you can make it. That's what, uh, I think that's what happens with experience. So, so, so it was really difficult in terms of uh, uh, the physical part, um, be because of, of my, uh, my fitness was not at its best. Uh, but you had to push every day, one step in front of the other, to reach the, the summit. And any mountain is 20% physical and 80% mental. Wow. Uh, the mental part is, is unbelievable because for you to come back from a mountain, you just need to turn around. No one needs to give you an excuse. You don't need an excuse. You know, just turn around and tell them, I, I, I give up. And you can find a hundred reasons. You can say, I'm sick. You can say the weather. You can say, but you always have to hold on to that one thought it keeps pushing you every day and that's what's harder because you need to push one foot in front of the other when you're running on empty you'll, you'll be tired and then first one hour but the next 12 hours it's mental it's, it's nothing physical uh, it's like uh, running an ultra marathon or running it's in uh, uh, even at a marathon the, the, the first 10 15k is the hardest but after the 10, first 10 15k it's just mental you know you're just moving and uh, it's the same game so uh, Amadablam was no different, um, not only in terms of uh, on the mountain, but off the mountain as well. Uh, we climbed in uh, COVID times. Mm. We were the only, when we reached there, we were the only team on the mountain. So there was no, we were the only ones, like no one summited the mountain before us this year. Wow. And very few after us. So you can imagine like, uh, um, uh, we, uh, um, it was really 
hard to, to, to be there because uh, you have that, uh, the, the authorities telling you that you can't climb because of COVID, that you need to get quarantined, and then they, they lock down the city, and then like it's like one problem after the other. So we had no idea if we would actually climb or not uh, until the day. So uh, it was not easy. So that was the first hurdle, and then after that is just mental toughness going going yeah. up the mountain because it's it's amazing because you can apply this in so many aspects of your life, not just the mountain. The idea of just pushing forward despite the excuses, despite the challenges that you're facing on a day to day um, basis, and I really admire that. Um, during your lack of sleep. I remember uh, seeing a picture where you were uh, putting a tent on the rocks and that was the way you, you were like supposed to sleep before you carry on and the difficulty in, in climb. Um, so what did you actually mentally say to yourself to keep yourself moving forward? So what was the dialogue inside your head? Uh, usually, like uh, when we're climbing, um, we'll be in the state of flow. So we would be so would be so focused. We would have no idea. Like we, we uh, all what's now had is what we can do to reach the summit. We will not be thinking of we're sleeping on rocks or or there's a cliff over here or there's a um, I'm not sure. Like there's a three a two thousand meter drop over here and we're just oh, wow. uh, uh, we're just uh, uh, holding on one rope. Uh, we'll be thinking of uh, let's move forward to reach the summit. You know. So that was the only thought that kept you in your head, basically, how we can move f up. One step in front of the other. Yeah. You, you can't be thinking of anything else. If you think of anything else, that's how you turn around. That's how you give up. So have you ever had self-doubt um, creeping? And if you did, what did you do to snap yourself out of it? Uh, self-doubt happens anytime. It happens at the beginning. It happens throughout. It happens even 10 steps before you reach the summit. Yeah. It happens all the time. But it's only up to you, you know, to, to take it away. And, and the way I do it is any way, anytime I, I find myself in doubt, I just think of myself standing on that summit. I can imagine, I can see myself standing on that summit. And then suddenly, you know, the, those doubts just disappear. This is so powerful because you just described the process of visualization, of visualizing yourself. And that's like a powerful effect. It has a powerful effect on your brain. And it's important to do that. Not everyone have... Uh, they deal with self-doubt differently. So I love what you just mentioned. During the extreme exhaustion, this is more to do with uh, like a team effort. Um, during extreme exhaustions in these situations, the emotions are high and, and conflicts within t team members can arise. Um, have you or anyone you know experienced any conflicts within the team? And if so, how did you resolve it? Uh, Nama Dablam, actually, my, my, the team was perfect. Like we were all on the same level. We were very, it was amazing that like they were all, I can't even I couldn't ask for a better team um, they were all super strong maybe I was the weakest <laughs> and uh, I mean, luckily this trip it went really really smooth uh, but uh, conflicts happen uh, the problem is in the mountain your true colors come out you cannot wear masks on the mountain uh, if you have something in you it will come out uh, there's no way you can hide anything on the mountain. If you're selfish, if you're arrogant, if you're uh, whatever. So, so basically sometimes um, uh, you do have personalities that don't um, adapt together well on the mountain and uh, conflicts happen. But I think communication is the best thing, you know, like uh, uh, communication between uh, teammates. Um, and usually, like me personally, I know who I'm climbing with or try to know like the group I'm, uh, I'm climbing with to avoid uh, such uh, conflicts. Okay, so it's important to actually know who you are with all the time when you do these difficult trips. Uh, because like one of the things, uh, one of the best teachings of the mountain is uh, patience. Uh, and uh, uh, sometimes when conflicts happen or things ha don't happen the way I want to on the mountain, then I, then I take it in the way where, uh, okay, this is one of the lessons that mountains keep teaching me, which is patience. So I have to always deal with different people. And if, if, if I find difficult people with me on the climb, then I just need to, to, to convince myself or remind myself that this is one of the teachings of the mountains is to, uh, to have patience. This is an amazing way of dialoguing and shifting your, your way of looking at your situation. Uh, and instead of basically blaming and like, um, like, you know, starting an argument and fights, you're actually saying, okay, what can I learn from this? This is a big lesson for me. 
Um, yeah. This is such a humble position and very productive, let's say, mindset to have. Um, moving on to a bit about uh, your other uh, things. I remember from our chat a few days ago that you said everything you do is to inspire people to reach their dreams and to change their lives. Is there a, mo- a moment in your life uh, where all this started yet? Yeah, I mean, like, what made you decide I'm going to do this from now on? I'm going to do all of this to inspire people. Is this something you grew up with or is this something you developed due to an incident, major incidents in your life? Okay, that's a very good question. <laughs> um, okay, um, after I climbed Everest, uh, I started going on uh, yearly trips called Rise to Success. Rise to Success is uh, usually where I take a group of people, individuals, in different parts of their lives uh, to climb either Kilimanjaro Ever space camp or another starting peak and uh, it's catered for the people that are asking themselves now what okay what am i doing here where am i in my life where is it going so when people that are lost not lost but uh, do not know where they're going or not happy where they are so these trips are very catered and curated in a way where it shows them that life is much bigger than what they think and they can do anything they set their mind to. That's basically what the trip is. And I start taking the groups of people between 15 to 22 people to these places. And every time we summit, I feel like basically I summit 22 times, okay? Because I summit with them, you know? So not only that they, they all reach their goals, but I feel that I've done it again for the first time because I'll be coaching them, I'll be helping them with the gear, I'll be. Uh, training them and uh, you know, so I'll be going them step by step until they actually summit, you know, I'm doing a uh, um, a course at Harvard at HBS called OPM and um, uh, Part of the course where we meet a life coach and uh, I told her about this and I told her I really enjoy this and it really makes me alive um, however, I wish I can make money with it because it's something that I do for fun and uh, and I wish uh, that's the way I get away from my business, like basically from my life, and I and and then that energizes me for the for the for the next year or or so. And I wish I can make a business out of it, uh, because uh, then I then I'd really enjoy what I'm doing. And she looks at me, and tells me that's a beautiful purpose you have, and uh, and I don't and it's a billion dollar industry, but you're not looking at the right place. And I, I said, what do you mean I'm not looking at the right place? And she tells me, only do businesses that help others reach their dreams. Yeah. And then that was the key. And I was like, I left there and that, that uh, sentence made my whole course worth it at uh, Harvard. Because she gave me the key, like, okay, now I know like, I have the key of happiness, you know? And I know exactly what makes me happy, which is to inspire others to reach their dreams. And then that's why... Uh, altitude is there, you know, altitude is there to help people reach their goals, their fitness goals, you know, and uh, now I only go into businesses that inspire others to reach their goal in a way, it has to be in a way. So that's an important factor. Wow, that's an amazing uh, vision for your life in terms of how you want to earn money while you do something you love at the same time changes people's life, which is what I also get got myself into because I realized what I was doing previously is not actually expanding my full potential but what you do is is incredible so thank you actually for sharing that that heartfelt uh, moment uh, with us if you with regards to business as an entrepreneur and businessman um if you had the chance now looking back at your whole life uh, if you had the chance to start your career over again knowing what you know now and uh, what would you do differently well i'll take other people's money <laughs> I'll explain myself. Okay. Uh, um, when I when I started when I first started, I was uh, very attached to my businesses, mm. uh, and uh, I took it really personally and uh, very close to me because I'm very I get very attached to the businesses I start. Uh, what I learned later on is that uh, sometimes uh, with the right partnerships, you can grow much faster and bigger, quicker. Uh, basically uh, a smaller piece of a bigger pie mm. uh, where I used to always want the whole pie but um, like I, what I realized later on 
is uh, uh, the right partnerships is very important and uh, I emphasize that word right, not only dumb money, but smart money. And the difference between dumb money is just cash and smart money is people or, uh, or uh, corporations or, or, or um, uh, corporations that can actually benefit your business. Uh, okay, with regards to uh, your personal life and business, what questions do you ask yourself often on a day-to-day basis? Let's say personal and let's say business. Like on a daily basis, what often goes in your head? Um, usually, uh, it's usually self-doubt. <laughs> it's usually self-doubt. Uh, it's usually self-doubt. Um, uh, doubting, uh, did I do the right step? Am I doing it right? Um, and then uh, or decisions are basically, um, did I make the right decision? That's the that's the thing that I did, that I have that I always think about. These are good questions. Okay, you you can be open about this next question, or you you it's up to you. Okay, um, what's your biggest fear? Failure. How do you manage it? I try not to fail. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, that was simple and sweet. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, Anything I do, I try, I give it my 120%. So if I, if I go in, I'm 100% in um, because I don't like to fail. I hate the feeling of losing. I, I just don't like it. I understand that it happens. And if it happens, I'm okay with it. But I'm only okay with it if I know that I did everything I can and it just didn't, I just, just didn't happen. And if I climb a mountain, if I climb a mountain, I was, I, I prepared, I, I trained hard for it. I was there. I did everything right. But I couldn't climb because the weather was a, a storm hit or I got injured or I got sick. Something happens. I'm okay. If I give it everything I can, then I'm okay with that. I love that. I really do. I think everything we should do in life should follow that kind of mindset. What you do is amazing. Okay. Um, uh, we have reached a, a rapid fire round of questions. It's a segment where I introduce this for our guests who are very to answer questions in a ver- lots of questions in a very short period of time, so I can get the most out of you. Okay, so are you ready for this? So yes. just tell me whatever that comes to your mind first. Okay, okay. <laughs> let's go. Okay, um, how do you find your inner peace? Uh, meditating. Meditating. <laughs> what makes a good leader? So what are the characters that makes a good leader? You can uh, um, common goal, like uh, communication. Uh, what are the top three habits that made a significant improvement in your life? Training. I used, I used to be obese when I was younger, so uh, uh, fitness. Okay, exercise. Uh, yeah, uh, seeking education, uh, uh, always seeking like um, things that sparks my interest, uh, balancing friends with family and uh, the balance in life. Okay, as an entrepreneur yourself, for someone who is starting a business or someone who's a start like in a business field uh, who are still new, um, what are entrepreneurial tricks that you discovered to keep you focused and productive from a day to day to day basis? Yeah, um, first one, like my, my advice to every entrepreneur is do your homework, <laughs> and uh, like how how do I keep focused day to day? I have my like I have my goal set in front of me. When I have a goal, like you just focus on the goal, focus on the summit, you know, uh, the, sleeping on rocks doesn't matter. Uh, 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 if you're tired now, it doesn't matter as long as you will reach that goal. And, and that's what happens with any entrepreneur. You're going to sleep on rocks, you're going to sleep, you're going you're gonna to suffer, you're going to cry, you're going to break down, but then you're going to stand at the summit. What's the best advice you've ever received? Uh, I have to think about that. Think. <laughs> um, um, I'm not. I'm not really sure what the, what the best advice. Uh, uh, I, I, I have one that that someone told me a long time ago that always sticks with my head, which is never quit your job until you have another one. Like, but I don't have a job now, so. so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Whatever comes to your mind, that's all right. Um, okay, if you could choose one book as mandatory read to all high school students, which book would you choose to give them to say you have to read this? This is a must. The Alchemist. I'm going to read that as well. Uh, I haven't read that one. I read books. I, I like reading, but this is, uh, I haven't read this one. Your homework. Okay. Your, my homework, yes. <laughs> uh, what do you think is the biggest waste of human potential? 
um, no goals. Having no goals in your life. Having no goals. What's the number one solution in your mind to healing the world? Healing the world? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Climb mountains. <laughs> Climb mountains. That's a good one. <laughs> it will fix a lot of things in character wise. Okay. If you could fix one world problem, if you have the power to fix one world problem to you personally, what would it be? Mm. Uh, like I, I'd say, um, I, I know many people like that they have, don't have access to water. Mm. They, are, are you talking about like uh, provide like uh, as a humanitarian side or what? Yeah, what? it could be humanitarian. It could be something technology wise. It could be anything that you could, if you have the power, let's say the magic wand to fix one world problem. Yeah. What would that be? Um, to you, that is relevant to you personally, Yani. Me personally, it's global warming because I see it firsthand uh, with uh, in the mountains. The ice caps, the mountains are are changing. Uh, uh, Kilimanjaro is losing its ice cap. Uh, the North South Pole are melting, and uh, you know you can yeah, so probably uh, global warming. Okay, we have reached the end of our fire rapid round, so it's good. I still have three final questions. What do you aspire to be, or what is the legacy you want to leave behind? Uh, you can take your time with this one. No, I know it. <laughs> uh, um, I always want to be remembered as a kind person. And it's written in my 25-year plan. Uh, uh, when I die, I want people to remember me as a kind person. Easy. Simple. Okay. Coming to one of the last two. If you were, la uh to die today, okay, uh, God forbid, what are the three unique pieces of knowledge, only three pieces of knowledge or wisdom from your own life and experiences would you give your family and people? Mm-hmm. This is the last three pieces of words that you would say to the world. Yeah, I have nine. Okay, wow, okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's very easy because, uh, sorry, not nine, <laughs> seven. I have the seven values uh, that I gained through my uh, mountaineering journey that I would like to pass on uh, yeah. to, uh, to my sons, you know. So uh, basically, uh, they have to have a purpose. They have to know their purpose or find their purpose. And, uh, and they have to do everything with passion. Always believing in themselves. Persistence, okay? Never ever give up. And always have patience because good things take time, okay? And always appreciate what you have. And last but not least, be humble. Wow. You said that is amazing. Thank you. And uh, if you know how, how they go through these seven values, uh, out of these seven values uh, are the stickers that uh, Altitude has. Each, each of these stickers is, one, is a quote of one of these values. I, I really, really appreciate sharing this because it's personal. And at the same time, it's, it's part of your business, part of your identity in your business and life. And uh, it's amazing. Any, is there any final word or advice or anything you want to announce or add? Yes. Not announce or add, but I have something to say. Yes, uh, uh, People always um, um, fight or, or uh, struggle or, or to, to reach the top. Okay. Um, we all uh, spend months or years of our time to climb our Everest, whether it was a mountain, physical mountain, or a, or a different type of mountain. Uh, however, uh, reaching the top is only temporary. No one stays at the top. Um, uh, we climb mountains and we spend 15 minutes there, and then we go down, mm-hmm. and then the next one climbs. Okay. So success is always, um, is always um, uh, for a short time. You're, no one is number one for a long time, or no one's at the top for a long time. It's only temporary. Then someone else takes that spot. Uh, but what people have to do, is they have to be happy that they reach the top, okay? And always value that, what, what they did. Um, that's a, it's an amazing quote. You just reminded me of, uh, uh, something that success is short-lived, but the actual thing, the actual thing that matters is the journey and who you become along the way. 
Um, so um, basically, this is my kind of understanding of what you what you just said. Um, I really don't want to end this, but this is the end. Um, I just want to really, really thank you so much again for sharing your your wisdom, sharing your advice, um, and uh, really, really pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks thank so you. Much. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today, everyone. To automatically receive the latest episode, please subscribe. And if you'd like to support the show, please share with one friend that you can help. And if you find it helpful, then please leave a review and comment on who you would also like to see as a guest in the future episodes. You can also message me directly on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn at Dr. Aisha Al Sheikh at dr. A-I-S-H-A-A-L-S-H-E-I-K-H. Keep working on your dreams to make them reality. And have a great morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are in the world.